Hannibal this? I will make for you his famous aubergine stew. <laughs> I don't know. You're supposed to say yes. Steamed asna would put years on your life. Dax, I don't want years on my life if I can only eat steamed asna. Sauteed, rolloped, fricasseed, fine, but not steamed. <laughs> Come on, just say the rhyme. If you can see Alma Rain, you come with me. Alma Rain, Alma come Rain, to four. come to four. Alma Rain, come to four. Alma Rain, then three more. Alma Rain, if you can see Alma Rain, you'll come with me. Alma Rain, you'll come with me. You know, I could have played five more years if they hadn't killed the game. You were the best that ever played. I know. I've played with them all. I've got work to do. Chief, I want you to do what you have to do. Thank you, sir. I'll get right on it. And this is Ops. The heart and soul of Deep Space Nine. Ah, there you are, Commander. Gentlemen, Madam Ambassador. To be honest, Commander, she seems... interested in me. What's wrong with that? Sir? A little romance, Odo. But What do you think? What is it? A clock! What can we do? Leave the station. Never! Get me a phaser! I'll get rid of Kara! <laughs> I want the truth. Is that clear? Let's see how this works. I offered you my kindness, my help, my leadership. And how do you repay me? With betrayal. But you won't get rid of me so easily. You see, unlike you, I understand history. My name will blaze across the stars long after your petty treacheries have been forgotten. So, this is how it all ends. What the hell? Uh... Opaka. I was carrying... Three lemonades. The sand was burning my feet. And I stopped here to... Ow! Do you realize how incredible this is? <laughs> I will make for you his famous aubergine stew. <laughs> I don't know. You're supposed to say yes. Steamed asna would put years on your life. Dax, I don't want years on my life if I can only eat steamed asna. Sauteed, rolloped, fricasseed, fine, but not steamed. <laughs> Come on, just say the rhyme. If you can see Alma Rain, you come with me. Alma Rain, Alma Rain, come to four. Alma Rain, come to four. Alma Rain, then three more. Alma Rain, if you can see Alma Rain, you'll come with me. Alma Rain, you'll come with me. You know, I could have played five more years if they hadn't killed the game. We created it. Not this time. No, not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made-up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. This one was invented by a writer. Not this time. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's an urban legend that never happened. No way. We got you. Not a chance. Not this time. It never happened. It never happened. We made this one up. It's fiction. We made up this one. We made it up. 
Not this time. Wrong. Not this time. Not this time. You're wrong. Not this time. It never happened. Have you ever walked out of a mall into a huge parking area and realized you'd forgotten where you parked your car? You ever gone mountain biking? What do you want to be when you grow up? What's the right tip? Have you called a plumber to your home lately? How superstitious are you? How much money would it take to make you spend a night in a cemetery? Would you display this as a trophy? Do you have a pet? Do you have a sweet tooth? Do you believe in the power of a curse? Have you had your hearing tested lately? Planning a trip soon? Can you remember the tallest man you've ever seen? Do you love to go a-wandering beneath the clear blue sky? Have you noticed what big stars real estate agents have become? Are you careful with your personal records? Does your computer ever seem to have a mind of its own? Have you ever visited a Chinatown section in a major city? Have you ever visited a flea market? Have you ever visited a truck stop? Did you ever have a job as a waiter? Have you noticed how many successful restaurants are theme-based these days? Have you ever had the desire to write your initials in wet cement? Nobody wants to see innocent people harmed. This is Jonathan Frakes, and you're the next caller. Squeeze this, rub this, listen to this. And welcome to tonight's main event. The human brain. Charm of the merry-go-round. See the numbers? As you watch this cat in my arms, it seems harmless and docile. The stuff of a lifetime. Observe the tools of the trade. The moon. Observe. Keys that unlock doors to hotel and motel rooms. Keep your eye on the little P. Have you ever walked through a graveyard? Dolls seem to have their own personality. Have you ever been hypnotized? All aboard. Portable sirens. Funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio tonight. Did I say funny? Actually, it was beyond belief. <laughs> I've been practicing for years. Ah, the 60s. This particular doll isn't owned by a little girl. Firefighters are constant reminders of heroic behavior. Auto racing has become one of America's fastest growing sports. Thieves are difficult to outsmart. Dolls seem to have their own personalities. Milk only comes in a carton. Many crimes remain a mystery forever. Making movies is easier than it's ever been. The conscience is a meddlesome companion. The guillotine has been out of fashion for a while. Comic books are serious business. The video business has become big business. An all access pass is a precious commodity. If you can remember the 60s, you weren't really there. Wheelchairs like this are used in many ways. Of course, it's always safer to hike in groups. Horses have long been thought of as magical creatures. History is filled with stories of magic clothing. The corner drugstore was a magical place. One of the things that brings people together is the joy of cooking. But all the information about the opposite sex is meaningless unless it's accompanied by an understanding of the heart. We've all heard the expression, clothes make the man. Is it really true? Did you have a favorite book as a child? Do you have a favorite method of falling asleep? Is there anything more precious than the gift of sight? Who can explain the mystery of music? Do we make our own luck? Can a home ever be truly safe? Have you checked the back sections of newspapers and magazines lately? What is the secret of the green thumb? What mysteries lie within the frame of a portrait? How many dramas have taken place in these tight little boxes? How do you describe terror? Have you ever noticed the curious things one sees discarded by the roadside? Who knows why certain people say certain things? Have you ever experienced a sleepwalking episode? Is there a more important job than that of a teacher? Is there a more annoying sound than the screech of chalk against chalkboard? I'm Jonathan Frakes. 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 Oh, 
Hello, everybody. Yes, it's Christmas. Well, it's nearly as it's the start of December, so it's officially the time when you're allowed to celebrate Christmas. But I am, I am occasionally ju- well, I am of the occasion jubilous. Uh, and how is everybody? How is everyone out there? We're going to do something slightly different tonight. I apologise profusely, but Stars has taken ill. Poor man, he is not fit for duty, so uh, I relieved him for the night and said, <laughs> he, he was like, no, I must come on, I must play. I'm like, no, 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 you settle down, you relax. No, actually, he said, no, he can't do it. So he's, he's feeling ill, so everyone wish him well, and we'll be back with Elite Force sometime soon. Um, but we'll do the next part. But I thought, well, I don't really fancy doing the game without him because we've carried on so far. So we'll do something a little different. I've kind of wanted to do this for a little... A little while. This has kind of been on the burner in the on the Trello board somewhere. Um, and I wanted to explore some of these Windows 95 programs that are amazingly part of my youth. Uh, Q idle, you know, circa 1998. This was me uh, running like Windows 95, 98 and running, you know, the Omnipedia, the technical, interactive technical manual uh, and the captain's chair. And I've also got Starship Creator on here, which I got very much into. I really enjoyed Starship Creator. But uh, yeah, how is everyone? How are you all out there? How are things doing? I hope you're having a good start to your December. Uh, we are also having a lovely little festive drink. I'm really starting, really kicking off. I mean, years and years ago, I was like, oh, Christmas, and now I've got kids as like yeah let's do christmas let's 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 make it more fun let's be jubilant um for everyone that's now sick of it well i apologize we're not going to stop this is not the place for you right now <laughs> uh okay uh psa's service announcements before we hop on in this saturday this saturday this saturday we've got the awards show uh the trek time official fourth annual awards show where we have a big bevy of awards to give out we've got 28 categories 28 categories of awards out there to celebrate including all of trek and a timelines category as well because where would we be without a star trek timelines category of course um so we'll be doing that uh, this Saturday, uh, join us at 1530 EST, 2030 GMT, you know, this time, but on Saturday. Uh, so I had to reschedule it because I managed to triple, it wasn't meant, meant, uh, supposed to be on the 16th. I had to reschedule it due to uh, uh, life things. I managed to triple book myself somehow, so something had to give. So, but we're having some good responses from that. We've, we've got a lot of nominations. If you're following our Twitter, you can see some of the nominations on there, including responses from the people we've nominated as well, which has actually made me quite happy. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bit of, bit of attention, a bit of buzz. You want to put on your suits, your finery, and come and join us? Please do. Uh, and then I believe next week we are doing... Uh, I need to check my calendar, actually. What are we doing? I, pre- I think next week is the last one for... Yeah, that's right. We're doing the Star Trek show. And that's the last show we're doing before break. But then on the 17th, please join me on the 17th as we do a... We, I'm doing a mini charity stream. Uh, for Mind, uh, for Mind UK, we're gonna be, I'm going to be doing some chilled out Trek things. We're going to be talking about mental health and how that affects us all, things like that. Come and help and donate. I'll have Tiltify links out there for people that can't make it but still want to donate um, and all, all that kind of stuff. So keep an eye out for that. That's happening very stream. And it is, in fact, it is Mind's. You can't really see that because it's reversed, but it is Mind's cozy streaming. It's an event they're putting on. Um, so please come and join me on the 17th for the Mind cozy streaming charity event. As little, I think I'll be up doing about four hours. I will have driven about five six hours from manchester before doing that so likely to be in a very chilled out state of mind but needs to say welcome to windows 95 uh if you are not familiar with operating systems past uh past the turn of the millennium well here is one this is this is what this is what windows used to look like years ago but we've got a few star trek things now like i said this was my youth this was i spent many a time in front of my old 486 or whatever i had at the time um this is a pentium this is emulating a pentium overdrive mmx 200 uh with a whole four gigabytes of ram yeah let's go mm. I'll tell you what's interesting because I love this bit. Let's let's just do a restart. Uh, so let's restart the computer. Um, Would be funny. My whole look at look. Oh, the memory test. Who doesn't remember the memory test? You can. I think you can still see this on modern systems. It's just hidden behind, um, hidden behind a bunch of uh, uh, overlays and things like that. But I think we should have sound as well. Let me shut up a minute. Oh no, it's going to glitch out doing this. Oh no, it's going to work. Oh, bloody hell, hang on. The interactive technical for approved Federation visitors and Starfleet personnel is now active on this terminal. So this is the Star Trek... Please indicate whether you wish to resume from a previously saved tour file or begin again. 
So this is uh, obviously you recognise the dulcet tones of Major Old Barrett Roddenberry there. Uh, yes, who did a whole new voice work. This is of the era of interactive multimedia. So this is where there weren't exactly games, but this is like the whole CDI experience. Like these could be computers could be more. They could be multi interactive experiences. Oh my god! Like and there's a lot of sy synergy and things like that. But Star Trek and Simon and Schuster published these. Simon and Schuster recently shut down or sold off the rights to Star Trek a few years back. Um, but yes, they they produced a lot of things for Star Trek in this era, and it's kind of like the great time. This is. Uh, I think this is about 90... Please indicate whether you wish six? to begin with a guided tour or explore on your own initiative. Uh, do you know what? I think we should do a guided tour. Who doesn't want a guided tour of the USS Enterprise D? So let's let's do a guided tour. Ooh, here we go. You're looking at Starfleet's flagship vessel, the Galaxy-class starship USS Enterprise. Registration number NCC-1701D. Incorporating the latest developments in warp field theory, sensor capabilities, and defensive systems, this ship represents the United Federation of Planets' Amigos. greatest technological achievement. I'm Commander William T. Riker, and for the past seven years, I've had the honor of serving as first officer of this vessel. My job is to make sure the ship is 100% ready cool. at all times to carry out this. her captain's instructions. And that requires me to be intimately familiar with every detail of her operation. Over the course of this tour, I'll be sharing some of those details with you. If at any time you would like to interrupt this tour to explore on your own, just activate the tour interrupt control. Tour interrupt control. Uh, let's just do a quick tour interrupt. Hang on, let's just see what that does. Oh, no. Uh, oh, okay, so it just takes us to there. The the okay, how do we go back? Oh, sorry, back up would be back up. I just want to have a look. Oh, sorry, the Major. Enterprise. I just want to have a look at... Uh, interactive technical. I want to see when this came out because I've got a feel it's like 97. Oh, my audio keeps glitching. Sorry if you're getting Uh, interactive technical manual. Oh no, this is 1994. So this is pre. This is pre. Um, Windows 95, so, but yet still runs on it. So, anyway, so let's go. Let's back up. Let's back up. Go back to the guided tour. Nope. Not gonna let me do that. There was a, there was an error. Okay, uh, let's go. Mo no, let's go mode tour. Oh, system error. You're trying to use Zordia to quit the program. All right, cancel. <laughs> we may have to restart. Okay, let's. Oh, here we go. Oh no, it worked. Any sound? No. I think we broke it. I think we broke it. Uh, okay, tour interrupt. Let's let's quit and start again. We'll go. We'll go through that. The main bridge is yeah, located up, at the top of the saucer module <laughs> uh, on deck one. Quit, it quit, quit. constitutes the primary oh, operation God. control yeah. center. Getting system errors here. Let's restart that. Let's start that again. We'll do the tour. We won't interrupt it. Things that happen when you're uh, things that happen when you're um, when you're running things on emulated software. Oh, we have a visitor. The interactive technical manual for approved Federation visitors and Starfleet personnel. Is now active on this terminal. Okay, let's go. Please indicate. Let's start a new one. Let's start a new one. You wish to begin with a guided tour. Yeah, we could guide a tour. Get a little bit of freaks. Freaks take two. Two take freaks. Let's go. We'll just watch this through. You're looking at Starfleet's flagship vessel, flagship the Galaxy class vessel. starship USS Enterprise. Registration number NCC 1701D. Incorporating the latest developments in warp field theory, sensor capabilities, and defensive systems, this ship represents the United Federation of Planets' greatest technological achievement. Hmm. I'm Commander William T. Riker, and for the past seven years, I've there. had the honor of serving as first officer. So this is officer this is this is the original bridge. My job this is to make sure the ship is 100% ready at all times to carry out her captain's instructions. As well. And that requires me to be intimately familiar. So this would be before the operation. generations refit as well. Over the course it? of this tour. I'll be sharing some of those details there. with you. There we go. Yeah, this would be before like the uh, generations refit. Just activate the tour interrupt control. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> the bridge. After being aboard the Enterprise for any length of time, you quickly come to think of it as a living entity. And you come to think of this area of the ship as its guiding intelligence. Ooh. Located on deck oh, look one, at that angle. at the very top of the saucer That's weird. Someone was on a ladder for the that. The bridge provides for centralization of all command and control functions. This amount of control is only possible through extensive use of the ship's computer. The computer carries out all routine operations 
supervised by the officers seated at the two forward duty stations. Duty. Ops and con. Don't be fooled into thinking that the computer really runs the enterprise. During alert situations, control of every critical operation got a wide is in the angle hands lens. of a trained Starfleet officer. Ooh, ready room. This is the captain's ready room, located just off the main bridge. The suite serves as an office. The suite? Note I never had it called a suite before. Computer terminal. But it's also a little more than that. Captain Picard has taken care to surround himself with... I wouldn't mind a HD remaster of this. Work. I feel like that would be quite good. Livingston, his lionfish. A model of the stargazer, the first starship he commanded. Items that... As he puts <laughs> the it, toilet. <laughs> ...give him a much-needed perspective on his duty. Duty. Because while it Sorry. may be my job to see that the Enterprise is fully... Have a bit of class. ...whatever we find out here in space. It's the captain who has to choose our ultimate course of action. The ready room gives him a place to do just that. It's a weird sort of ready, jerky fate zoom out. That can kind of makes me think they're just captain. walking backwards rather than using the zoom control. It's a weird one. Deck 36. Main engineering. 36. The very heart of our starship. Without the massive amounts of power being generated by the matter-antimatter reactor. Oh, not only you know what this is. This is actually a panoramic. Survival in space this is someone constant. dragging their mouse. These critical systems require constant fine-tuning and round-the-clock yeah. attention. More often than not, you'll find our chief engineer, Commander Geordi LaForge, hard at work here, checking the master system's display or observing the core reactor pattern. Yeah, because you can't see the core moving, so I think it's a panoramic. I think these are views we can actually go and look at. In extreme emergencies, it can be reconfigured to emulate con, ops, tactical, and other command operations, including limited flight control functions. Hmm. Here aboard the Enterprise, our primary mission is exploration. The technology how much, contained in this room how utilitarian the uh, flexibility in transporter rooms look. Assignment. This is the transporter room, one of four such facilities located here on Deck 6. Two others are located on Deck 14. Transporting makes some people I know nervous. Yeah. It's really a straightforward is process. Is that a zoom out? Can you see perspective on that? It's pattern. weird. I wonder if that's like a, cr it's like a, 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 a body shriek a window as opposed to a zoom out. Particle. You're transported thousands of kilometers to your destination and then reintegrated <laughs> by atom. <laughs> let's go to Farpoint Station. <laughs> Sick Bay serves as the primary medical care facility for all of the 1,012 crew and family members of the That's a lot of crew. Each of these bio beds is no, directly no, tied like to the sensor shot. unit above it, Maybe. aiding in the diagnosis of most ailments, regardless of the species of the patient. And should surgery be necessary, the overhead. I, don't know. I can't. I can't work out if they're just scanning a panoramic or if they're actually. Comprehensive reading. In the hands of the wrong doctor. All this equipment could be a little bit oh, no, maybe it's still the panoramic. Which is why I'm glad for the reassuring presence of our chief medical officer, Dr. Beverly Crusher. Occasionally, Dr. Pulaski. Ten forward. Oh, that angle. This That's is the weird. Ten forward lounge, so named because it occupies most of the that forward that, area. That shot does not flatter that room. 10. Like the holodeck, ten forward is a place for the crew to relax and unwind from the day's cares. The spectacular view of the stars through the bay windows here certainly helps to put things in perspective. But this is mainly a place where the crew comes to enjoy each other's company, to play a game of 3D chess, or just hash things out over a drink. It's really like an old-style saloon more than anything else. <laughs> complete with its own bartender. With a, complete with its own double... <laughs> with the saloon it doors. serves up the meanest batch of synth uh, hey, the you stand and something going, Mr. Racker. The observation lounge. Yeah, the conference room. Critical decisions concerning the Enterprise's mission are, of course, Captain Picard's to make. Yet, whenever possible, he likes to use his senior officers as a sounding board on those issues. This lounge, located directly off the yeah, bridge on deck panoramic. one, has been specially outfitted for that purpose. Yeah, you can't see the perspective Note change the behind the chairs. Oh, can you? No, no, you can't see the perspective change behind well, the chairs. Look. Two large display screens located on either end. So they're just they're just moving the panoramic and then just cropping and kind of zooming it in. It's a clever effect. It's, it's Don't be misled by the empty space. Okay, this is CG. yellow grid lines on the wall. This room is the most exciting and technologically <laughs> advanced form of recreation. This is the most messy world. room on the ship. This is the holodeck, one of four such facilities located on Deck 11. 
In here, through the use of holographic projections, Ooh. force fields, and matter replication, a the crew can of imagination. any environment they can imagine. You'll often find me in here hiking the mountains of my native Alaska, or engaged in other quiet <laughs> The captain's quarters. Though huh. so these are Captain Picard's personal quarters, and he is a very private individual, we've decided that it was important to show you his room anyway. <laughs> we, we thought we'd show you anyway. One object. Ah, I'll call it flute, although it holds the memories of a lifetime for the captain. Nor this Klingon dagger, though it too holds great significance. Mm, what I wanted to show you was this Mintakan tapestry. The Mintakans came to regard Captain Picard as a god because of a breach in the Prime Directive. I believe the captain leaves the tapestry on display as a reminder to himself of the overriding importance. I wonder what the station the is behind and why that's significant, actually. I never noticed that before. Data's quarters. This very ordinary looking room houses an extraordinary individual. Oh, yeah, Data's painting Our ship's was third in command and operations manager, Commander Data. You'll immediately note the absence of a bed in here. That's he does get Data a bed, though. He's an android. Because he starts having nightmares. Sleep Actually, he should have a bed in it. If this is post uh, He's also awkward things, there should be a, a lot of other things, as you can tell by looking around be a bed the room. In there. His violin, his painting, <clears throat> his Sherlock Holmes costume, even the food dish that belongs to his cat Spot are all evidence Ever since of his toys. desire to experience everything that he wants <coughs> to know what it means. Never got a dog though, did he? Though I sometimes think he misses the point. It's the constant striving to achieve, to learn and experience all that one possibly can that helps form the very definition. And that's why Data's a better role model than most people on respect, TV. Data is at least as human as any of us. Well, he is now. <laughs> Troy's quarters. These I have quarters been here often. very little about their occupant. The bunk, food replicator unit, and desktop viewer are what all standard. What is that chair? But then it's the a weird kind of hanging chair. Commander Deanna Troy doesn't make a habit of disclosing. We'll go, we'll go look at that. We'll see herself. if we can look at that a bit better. A part of that, I think, goes along with being ship's counselor, the one person on board the Enterprise that everyone runs to with their problems. In that role, you don't get into the habit of revealing too much about yourself. But I can personally vouch for the fact that hidden behind Deanna's serene exterior, there is a complex, compassionate <laughs> individual. Why is it focusing on the pile of chicken on the on the table? <laughs> Wharf's quarters. This foreboding suite belongs to our ship's security officer, the equally foreboding Lieutenant Worf, the only Klingon officer in Starfleet. Worf's heritage as a member of that warrior race is obviously very important. The Klingon Empire. You can see evidence of that everywhere you look in here. Some might say that the prominent display of these artifacts. Statue of the legendary Klingon Emperor Kalis, <laughs> the Batleth. Uh, numerous that's not really a Batleth. That was something else. What was walls, that? Proves the impossibility I've seen of that coexistence with the Klingons. That even the best of them can never shed their warrior heritage. I disagree. To me, their presence embodies the Vulcan concept of Idik, infinite diversity in infinite combination. Words that, while not explicitly spelled out in the Starfleet Charter go straight to the heart of everything the United Federation of Planets stands for. And there we go. Tour. I think that's the end of the tour. The end of the tour. Very nice. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to turn off my snow because I think it's glitching or something. There we go. Okay. Ship exterior. Here we go. So we can... Yeah, you can turn... Not like a free... Uh, it's kind of like a free scroll, but I think it's very much generated frames. Can we use keys to do it? Oh, gosh, no. Continue. What happened there? Okay, can't do that. Uh, oh no, this is quite... Oh, hang on, so can we go... I can't imagine for one minute this is 3D animated. I think what they've done is they've just got every single frame possible. If we can go like there and turn it... I definitely don't say... I mean, that's definitely... For 1994, that is definitely not 3D animated. But, that's actually really cool. A little planet. Actually, isn't that like the, one of the planets you usually see in the intro? We've got a starbase down here somewhere. Did I spot a starbase somewhere? Where was it? 
Huh, hang on, hang on. Huh, hang on. There's a sun. I'm sure I saw a star base. Where the hell was that? Or was that the planet I saw? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go. My little starbase one there. So they must have grabbed, like, literally every frame from every possible angle for this. It's cool, though. Like, if you really want to... If you're an enthusiast modeler, like, this is a... This is a prime resource. Shame you can't zoom in. Can you zoom in? No, you can't zoom in. All right, so welcome to the technical manual. This is... We're going to go on every every possible possible system that is available. So we've got a few things. Mode. So this is just our... Oh, I see, right, sound. Voice and sound. Yeah, we can have voice and sound. We've got the index, we've got the tour, the help function. Oh, here we go. Okay, photos and animation, sequence areas, large, enlarge and reduce, detail. Okay, so there's some interactability. All right, uh, oh, and that's weird that's done that twice. Oh, parallels. Parallels only appears when related to parallel topics. Oh, okay, I see, right, right, help. No. Okay, let's, let's back up. Right, get rid of help. Uh, okay, how do we go back? <laughs> Main view, no, this is this is just Oh, exit help, there we go. Okay, let's go for an introduction. The Galaxy Class Starship USS Enterprise NCC seventeen D was built at the Utopia Planitia fleet yards above this Mars man is dying. and commissioned in twenty three sixty three. It is presently commanded by Captain Jean Luc Picard. Presently. Yeah. So pre pre generation. So mission objectives. Mission objectives for Galaxy Class Starships include exploration, huh. scientific and cultural research, and implementation of Federation policy. This is cool. Okay, so this is like this is essentially if you had the technical manual. I still have the technical manual somewhere. Where did I put that? And a big stack of Star Trek books that I I think I put them under my sofa. Um no. Hey, you like the sweater, you like the little Christmas. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Specifications. So we get some details. Ship design requirements include Ooh. Independent operation for seven standard years at nominal warp six velocity. Deep space exploration missions, including charting and mapping, first cultural context scenarios, Why and full flashing? biologic and ecologic study. Oh, oh that's introduction. Oh, okay, so we can go. That's that's up the chain, right? Okay, let's go. General overview. Okay, we know we know to go over all this. Oh, here we go. Past and future. Long been charged with a broad spectrum of responsibilities to the Federation galaxy at large. As the volume of explored space continues to grow, so do those duties, and the need for multi-purpose ships such as the USS Enterprise. So this is the legacy, so the past and future, so the original one. Uh, design lineage, just have a look. Oh no, that's construction. Official okay, start oops. date, Galaxy Class Starship Project God, there's a lot to read here. 2343. USS Galaxy Operational Status... So much reading in this tiny little box, that's crazy. USS Galaxy Essentially, this is just the interact, the technical manual, the book. USS just put it there. Uh, future. What about future? What's future? The Galaxy Class USS Enterprise is constantly. Yeah, they didn't pair enough. <laughs> She's doing stellar work here. Upgrades and refits are expected Gosh. throughout the projected hundred-year lifetime of the spacecraft. Whatever the direction of future ship design, various vehicle plan forms, plan forms. I think it's a typo. Will be tested in thousands of hours of computer simulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is all sort of kind of set in universe. So let's go to ship exterior. Let's go all the way up here. Let's zoom around. Right. Ah, right. So we've got systems, propulsion. Wow, this really goes into. Yeah, we. Primary warp propulsion aboard the Enterprise. Ooh, there we go. Good video. By a fifth phase matter antimatter reactor. Secondary fifth phase. Power is provided by fusion drive motors. Okay, okay, we can go, yeah, we can go deep into the reaction control system. Wow. The ship's reaction control system is designed primarily for sublight station keeping operations. Individual C94. thrusters are what was Majel doing in 94? And battle section assemblies. When did Majel die? It wasn't until the 2000s, wasn't it? So yeah, they definitely got her voice down in all this, you know, and I know I know the Roddenberry Archive definitely has... Exterior view of the Galaxy Class Starship, USS Enterprise, um, NCC-1701. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I know that, you know, they've definitely got her voice logged, sorry. Exterior details. Is anyone getting that glitching as well? Or is that just me? Uh, bridge. Bridge. The main bridge is located at the top of the saucer module on Deck 1. and constitutes the primary wow. operation... Wow. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, I like that. 
Oh, that's a cool shot. I like that. Oh, look, you can see the observation lounge there. Oh, that's cool. Oops. Oh, oh, we're on the bridge now. Okay. The main bridge is located at the top of the saucer <laughs> And look, we can now pan around. Oh, look at this. The it's not as exciting as the Roddenberry Archive, but since that's not up anymore, it's as close as we're going to get. So we can actually move about. Look about. Sorry for the tiny window on this. This is just how the, the game's displaying itself. You know what everyone's got to do? You just got. Oops. No, we need to sit in the captain's chair. Can we do that? Yeah, there we go. Sit in the captain's chair. I'm the captain now. Main viewer. The main viewer is located wow. at the very front of the bridge chamber and can be configured to display output from one of the forward operators. Back up. Back up. Uh, turbo lift. Forward turbo lift. Oh, here we go. Right, so we can go. That's where we go to the different areas. Okay, let's go to the ready room. Can we go? Okay, we have to press the button there. Okay, let's go ready room. Can you let me in? Oh, here we go. Transit. Oh, transit mode. Ooh, hello. Oh, that's cool. Oh, what if I could do that all the, the way to the engineering? Room is located just off the main bridge and serves as an office for the ship's commanding officer. Okay, so you can see the little nodes. So there's only a certain amount of fixed points you can go through. See, this is really smooth as well. I like how, like for a panoramic, this is really good. Can we see in the head? No. <laughs> can we see what's in there? I mean, we know there's a toilet in there or a washing basin. Livingstone and the Stargazer. Double click. No. What can we do with it? There we go. This is a model of the Constellation class ship, the USS Stargazer, lost in the Battle of Maxia. How do we go back? Captain's ready room. There we go. Uh, okay, yeah. So we've got all the details there. Over to here we can go sit in... Oh, you can even sit in his chair. This is what he sees. Come! Alright, let's go. Uh, let's see if it'll take us. We wanted to have a look at... I wanted to have a look at Councillor Troy's room because I wanted to see what that funky chair was about. Let's go. Let's engage. Ah, oh, it just jumped me there. I thought it was going to go with the... Alright, where's that funky chair? Isn't it weird they chose Troy's quarters? Because, you, yeah, we, we see Troy... We don't often see... We never see Crusher's quarters, do we? Or maybe you do, like, once, like, as a side shot. And we never really see Riker's quarters. But where was that funky chair? Wasn't it, like... That one there! That! Look at that! That's, like, over... Can we go back and look at that? Yeah, look at that! It kind of sits at the back and overhangs and kind of goes into the frame. That's weird. Can we go a bit closer? Yeah, well, you only see kind of see. Yeah, you only kind of see it early on, but you don't see much. It's just kind of like you kind of like get like this shot here, don't you? Like a side with a prop. Oh, mind you, don't you get it? You get a lot of it in Sub Rosa, actually. But I think they probably just use kind of they use Troy's quarters, don't they? They kind of oh god, come here. They kind of use this shot. Mm, nice sheets, nice sheets. Ah, oh, can't even see me in the mirror. That's cool though. Uh, oh, can we use the replicator? Use the replicator. The replicator control panel uh -huh. permits manual selection of the food to be synthesized. How would you know what to order? Beep, beep, beep. Banana hot. Okay. Uh, back up. Let's go. Let's go back to the door. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, let's see if the hollow deck is interactable. Oh, transit. Ah, oh, let's see what happens. Here we go. Get ready for this. I think this is my favourite feature. Oh, wow! <laughs> this is cool! <laughs> Ooh, can we run programs? The holographic Ooh. environment oh, simulator up. utilizes banks of omnidirectional holodiode clusters to wow. project images and create tactile impressions. Okay, okay. These simulations uh, are normally indistinguishable from the natural shuttlecraft simulation. Okay, so you just simulation. basically go inside a shuttlecraft. Uh, you can't really do anything in it, can you? Oh, what is that weird noise? 
of that. No, there's nothing to do in here. You just sort of look inside a shell. This is the lanky shell, isn't it? This is the class two, not the bigger ones. This is the more the kind of um, longer ones you see early on in, in, in next generation. Arch. Arch. Alright, systems. Oh yeah, and you get all this. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, we've done this. Okay, location. Let's go to engineering. Oh, no. Transit, yeah. Gotta do the transit. I love that wireframe enterprise, that's great. <laughs> that's cool. I like that. That's fun. <laughs> that's a cool little thing that they put in just to kind of go like, it could be fun if we do this. Right, where's the self-destruction? Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, right. Wow, we can go real in-depth. I mean, anyone that's got the technical manual will know this, but... Oh, well, that's a cool shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to go through the entire dictionary here, like... Uh, what about... Operation and safety! Oh, can we go to the battle bridge? Actually, that'd be cool. Utilities? No. Computer system. Utilities. Oh god. Stressing out here. Infrastructure includes a number of related distribution Parallels, what does that mean? Waste management? Power, optical data net Waste management. Waste management systems aboard the Enterprise make optimal reuse of waste products, utilizing technology to approximate complex ecologic processes. Okay, so we can actually get the, the, the whole sewage system. Wow. Okay. Very uh, recycled. Uh, everything's recyclable. Everything. It's made out of shit, you know. Uh, let's have a look. We'll go, we'll go everywhere. So, well, uh, ship exterior, bridge, ready room, main engineer. Let's go transport room. Uh, we've got a transit. Got to go. Someone took time to make this. We're going to use it. I think they need this in the next Roddenberry archive, actually. <laughs> I'm like, just, just take me there. Like, okay. I want to go to engineering. <laughs> ah, Chief O'Brien's quarters. <laughs> Extravehicular transport to and from Extra the ship vehicular. is by a number of transporter systems, which allow personnel... Oh, sorry. Can we use it? Woo! What do we beam up? What have we got? What have we got? Is that an exocomp? No, it's just someone's luggage. Huh, <laughs> that's cool. I wonder if there's anything like that on the bridge. We'll go, we'll go have a look. Uh, can we stand on the pad? Gotta stand on the pad. Yeah, here we go. Let's get some nightmare monsters in us. Okay, uh, evacuation, limitation, other functions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, let's have a look at sickbay. Engage. I think this is definitely like, there's definitely like an in. Uh, there's two videos there, isn't there? There's a going to the turbo lift and coming away from the turbo lift for each one. That's cool, though. It's a fun function. Oh, it's lots of things Six to look at. Sick refers to the primary medical care facility located okay. on the port side of Deck 12. Let's have a look in here. Oh, can we get in the office? No, we can't. Oh, we can get in the office. Hang on, if we go here. There we go. Inside. This is, this is, uh... It's where everyone hangs out. Everyone just hangs out with the door here, don't they? Like, ah, can I, can I... Can I trouble you with a question, Doctor? Yes, of course. Uh, do they have the red surgical suit anywhere? They have arch. I mean, for a crew of a thousand, it's only four beds. Five, technically. But I think this is this is just m main sick bay. I think there are supposed to be like other sick bays all over the place. That's why they have a staff. Oh, that's a weird picture. Can we get a little bit closer to it? Hang on. What is that? I didn't really notice that before. It's just kind of ambiguous AI shapes. 
It's like something a nightmare would produce. Okay, uh, sick bay. Ten forward. Oh, no, we're going to the observation lounge. I pressed the wrong button. God damn it. Ba -da. Ba -da -ba. No, it's not going to go. Oh my gosh, sorry, my audio is mucking up a little bit. I keep having to restart the audio engine. All right, there we go. Uh, ten forward. Let's go. Oh, I didn't press transit. Okay, maybe we're going to the observation lounge. Maybe we're going ten forward. Who knows? I don't know if you guys are getting that audio glitch that happens. I think it might just be me with my monitors. It's easy enough to reset. Okay, observation lounge. Okay. Now. This lounge is primarily utilized by the Enterprise Oh, this is definitely. For that so this is definitely they definitely feel or took photos of this when the refit happened between all good things and generations. Because look, where are the ships? They're actually in the corridor here. They're actually down in the starboard exit. They moved them for some reason. I don't know why. I think I need to rewatch Generations to see if they've changed it, but I think they do, and I don't really know why they do that, uh, other than to maybe take the image of the Enterprise B away, possibly. Who knows? But starboard exit. Okay, there's not there's not much here. There's, you can look out the window and see see the back outside of the ship. That's about it. Oh, actually, I think. Hang on, hang on. Abort location. Abort. Abort. Can we go? Oh, they borrowed them for filming the Und Undiscovered Country. Did they really? I did not know that. What did they use them for in that, then? Was there another... Um, was there another conference room? That I'm not aware of. Uh, we're going to go 10 forward, won't we? It's transit. Let's go. We really borrowed them for the Undiscovered Country. I'm trying to think. Oh, did they take them away? Because they used this set for the Undiscovered Country filming. No, really? Maybe. Here we are. Let's get messy. The ten forward lounge It'd be cool if, like... Oh, yeah, I stand behind the bar. Conditions for the Enterprise crew. Oops. Sorry, this panning isn't very good. Oh, replicator. Ooh. Food service on board can we make something? Is Press a button? By a molecular replication system that can... Transporter based replicators hmm. permit duplication. Adapt this for a point and click game. Yeah, that'd be great. Like a horror game or something. And relatively low energy cost. Definitely should. It's interesting because you'd be like, this looks like CG, but it's like, no, these are actual set photos. Like, this is modern day CG, but you wouldn't have been able to do this in 94. Oh, someone's playing a game of checkers? Someone's with a bit of 3D. Yeah, recreation equipment. 3D chess. Hey, Cranky. Yeah, like expanded 3D chest. Okay, where else are we going? So we've done 10 forward. Let's, we've done the holodeck. We've done sick bay. Transwater manager. Da, 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 da. Let's go to the captain's quarters. Nope. Hang on. Nope. Can we click that one? There we go. Here we go. <laughs> Enjoy it. I like to think you're playing a little robot. Every time it moves, like. <laughs> That's cool. They had enough of the sets still left to be able to film those this corridors. Of rooms has been designated for the use of the ship's commanding officer, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. What's interesting is they had the corridors attached to the sets as well. I would have thought this would have been a different kind of construction, but maybe. I'd have to look at the set group blueprints, which you can find online. Oh, yes, look. The captain... Oh, you can't really see it from there. Hang on. Can we go back to here? The captain's, like, lounge... Lounger, like they're not. This is like this. The chaise lounge. The I'm just going to sit and relax and read my book. Actually, I kind of want a chair like that. That looks quite comfortable. I would definitely fall asleep on it. The sofa in there. Like this is this is better than my living room. This is this is ridiculous. Oh, you guys, uniform there. Look, uniform. Standard Starfleet duty uniform, incorporating duty. personal communicator into the Starfleet insignia. Decorative pips on the collar indicate the wearer's rank. Case, that of captain. That of captain. Let's go back. Hang on, where's back? There we go, back up. We see what's in here. No, you can't get in there. But you can see his bed. 
Do you think they have? Do you think they must have blinds on this? Because I know what they find out in in um, a lower decks episode where Boimler has to have quarters right next to the nacelle that uh, they they can they can oops they can they can put blinds. But like this just looks like a recipe for uh, like Captain. Did you <laughs> can can get a card to the bridge? I guess so. Can you please rotate the uh, the ship ninety degree starboard? Why, sir? Because we're facing a sun and I can't sleep. <laughs> Uh, we got s oh a sextant. Navigational sextant, similar to those used These by the yeah, same glass text transitions glasses. Navigation. Yeah. In which case they're just dark all the time. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Oops, no, don't mean to do that. Back it up, back it up. Let me begin. See that painting? No, we can't see that painting. Got a few things on his shelf. Resican flute. Can we play it? Wind Ooh, it opened. Known as a resican flute from the planet. The planet Catan. Just thanks to Auto, I have one of mine, one of those on the shelf up there. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Data's quarters. It's a life data. So we'll, we'll briefly look at the quarters, and then we'll head on to the. Uh, we'll have a look at the Omnipedia next, I think. Which will be a brief visit. Look at this, that's so good. They must have had the corridors connected, unless that's just a clever transition. Which it could be a clever this transition. Of rooms has been designated for the use of Commander Data. Ooh. Oh, the Mask of Masaka. Look at that. Mask Remember masks? By Commander Data. This mask represents... Oops, no, I don't want to spoil myself. <laughs> I have seen the episode, don't worry. Replicator, which I bet we can find out all about food Personal replication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terminal. Man, if you ever if you wanted an AI synthesized Major's voice, just try and find all the audio for this. Drama artifacts. These artifacts were acquired by Commander Data in the process of using drama. That's um, studying the human four condition. musketeers. Why would he have that? Why would he have the four musketeers thing? Because that wasn't actually Data. That was Barclay's holographic recreation of Data. That's interesting. Unless he was enamored and went, oh, maybe I should try that. Interesting. Oops. Uh, abort location. Back up. Back it up. Back it up. I do want to go to the bridge and see if we can fire a torpedo. This painting yeah. represents one of many styles of painting from human art history. <laughs> Interesting now with all the AI art like technology is like... Yeah. Data wouldn't have a problem. Data, draw me a picture of Councillor Troy. I shall leave the specifics up to you. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Multiphasic scanner? Ooh. Oh, those things. Desktop viewer and multiphasic scanner. Thank you. They really got her to narrate everything, didn't they? That's crazy. Alright, let's go. Don't know how to try. Let's go. We'll finish off with warp, warp. Warp's quarters. Warp's quarters. I like to think it's just going to go. <laughs> That's cool. Is it going to go in the turbo lift? No, it's just going to go down the corridor. Okay, this is cool. That is cool, because it even accounts for the fact of, like, you're going from Data's to Wharf, so you play this, this video. Really clever. For, for, for 1994, form. it's clever. For, for today, it's, it's probably quite standard, but... Uh, let's go look at that weird uh, Batleth that was on the wall. I think it's up here. No, that's the bladed weapons. His statue of brothers. This Kalos and Moroth. The legendary struggle between Kalos the Unforgettable and his brother, Morath. I thought it was Morgoth. Uh, somewhere he has another set of bladed weapons. Let's get in his quarters. Not that one. Oh, maybe, no, it is that. It is that one there. That one there. Hang on, let's go here. Da, 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 da. That. Look at that. That's not a Batleth. This is a Klingon Batleth sword. Literally, no, that is not a Batleth. That's something else. That's oh, it looks like a broken batleth actually. To be fair, it looks like it's missing the middle part, which is kind of a cool design. But I wouldn't say that's a batleth. Of course, I am a Klingon weapons military expert. I'll have you know. Okay, let's go back to the bridge. Uh, let's go to the bridge. Transit. Whoop, 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 whoop. Should be a short hop. Let's go. Let's 
you've seen the modern day version of this, you just see the turbo lift moving across the uh, thing. Right, we need to fire some torpedoes. I'm pretty sure you can do that in this, because I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Right, let's go to tactical station. And there's a button you can press somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, so you can see all the different buttons. I'm sure there was definitely a... Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm sure there was a button you could press to fire a torpedo. Unless I'm just misremembering that. Uh, maybe I'm misremembering that. Ah, phasers? Phaser is the generic term for the directed energy devices currently in use aboard all Starfleet God, you can even go into typical maneuvers. Typical oh my gosh. Maneuvers deal with sublight starship hey kids, you like reading? No? Well, oh, fuck you. Back up. Okay. Uh, let's. Oh, the battle bridge. We can go to the battle bridge. Can we? Oh no, it just shows you the battle bridge. Stations. Ah. I would have liked to have gone to the battle bridge. That would have been good. All right. Maybe we can warp somewhere. Uh, let's go over here. Thank you. Con. No, not as interactable. Okay. This is cool. In depth. If you want to get a Windows 95 emulator, you can. I can certainly put you in the direction of playing with this if you want it. Main view. Main view. Okay. Uh, parallels. Okay, so bridge exterior. Okay. Uh, mode. Okay, let's let's quit this and we'll go have a look at the Omnipedia. Ah, uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> let's quit. Beam me up. I like these holodeck door for that. That's cool. Same glass tech as transition glasses, yeah. Um, right, Omnipedia. I need to load. Uh, I need to load a CD into this. Hang on. Da, 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 da. I've got to find it now. Where the fuck did I put it? Where did I put it? Uh, Omnipedia CD. Omnipedia update, I think I can run. Because I did an update. The Originally, I had the original Om Omnipedia, and they did an update, which I think added more of Voyager into it. So let's do that. Star Trek Omnipedia. Omnipedia update. So this is... Basically, an encyclopedia. We won't spend too long on this, but there's a there's a fun video section in this, which is quite cool. Now establishing data link. Clearer, Memory major. Alpha. Welcome to the Federation Omnipedia data bank. Accessing. So Ready. yeah, literally, you can go from Akuchi Moya. <laughs> you can literally look at everything. Admiral Aaron. Akamarians. We can go through things. There is the USS Delphi. Uh, there's, there's a serious amount of information in here. USS Enterprise. No bloody air there is BLC. A related resource for this entry. Ooh, show resource. What's the, what's the related resource? Enterprise Starships. So yeah, and you even get a chronology. Accessing. So the chronology is quite cool. So you can actually go through in order. Like what happened, say, uh, let's go... How far up to the future does this go? This goes up to... Okay, the adversary. <laughs> so we go up to the adversary. Hang on. There we go. And it gives you the log of what happened in that episode. So season three of DS9. Yeah, season three. Yeah, it gives you it gives you all the thing. But there is somewhere in here. There are some Accessing. topics. So, a little video here. If the Starship Enterprise is a legend in, in the history voice. of space exploration, it is due in no small measure to the legendary exploits of Captain James Tiberius Kirk. I Kirk think I know was who that born is. in the year 2233 in Iowa on planet Earth. He entered Starfleet Academy at age 17 and was quickly recognized as an exceptional student. Kirk earned notoriety for being the only Starfleet cadet ever to beat it's, the infamous yeah, no-win Kobayashi Maru simulation exercise. Oh, yes, it he did cool this too. by reprogramming the simulation to make it possible to win. For those that didn't guess, it's Mark Thereby Rand. won a commendation for original thinking. After graduation in 2254, Kirk's first assignment was aboard the USS Farragut. Which wasn't that ship. Kirk was a member <laughs> they of a landing it. party to planet Tycho IV. Hey, During Jibba. a tragic incident, 
in which a cloud creature caused the death We're looking at the of over 200 Farragut crew members, <laughs> Three including people the same. his commanding officer, Captain Garovic. Although there was nothing he could have done to save them, the incident haunted Kirk for many years. Young Kirk's interests were not limited to academia and space exploration. You can imagine me at like during his academy days, he became ten years very old, close just devouring to this, and to Janice Lester. <laughs> and he later had Lady serious Marcus. relationships with Dr. Janet Wallace, <laughs> Ariel Shaw, <laughs> and Dr. Carol. I'm like Marcus, this is just pimp shaming Kirk. Had a son, <laughs> David Marcus. Perhaps Kirk's most tragic romance was with Edith Keeler. Did he have a romance with Edith Keeler? A woman Keeler? from the past. I need to rewatch that episode. Kirk was forced to watch Edith die, rather than change the flow of history. Kirk's he was the ladies' man. Renown came from his command of a historic five-year mission of the original Starship Enterprise, from 2264 to 2269. Oh, why is that video smaller? That's weird. I think it's a quick time problem there. And we've lost the audio. Kirk became oh. the leader of an extraordinary crew that included his science officer, Spock, and Dr. Leonard McCoy. Together they faced the unknown dangers of deep space cheating death as they explored strange new worlds ah! defended the federation he set the line and expanded the frontiers of science and knowledge after the five year mission Kirk accepted a promotion to admiral but was soon thrust back into the center thrust. seat of active duty when the machine entity V'ger threatened the earth in 2271 Kirk again returned to active duty in 2285 when Khan Noonien Singh hijacked the Starship Reliant and stole the Genesis device. So, just context. A battle with Khan so cost this. the life... So, like, when... Yeah, this was, what, 96, 97. When I had this... Actually, when was DS9 Season 3? Yeah, back in 97. When, when I had this, like, I only had TNG on... VHS tapes and when they were sort of like given to us by a friend I had to watch everything else was watched live so when this came out like I had no way of watching the films easily like you do now you can just put it on and watch it like there was no way of doing that unless you got the VHS tapes which cost an extraordinary amount of money so this was kind of like my big access to nerding out on Trek was watching all these entries and going like oh that sounds like cool like I never watched The Wrath of Khan like, and you just go find it like and then eventually, like about a couple of years later, it'd be on telly. I'm like, we've got to watch it, Dad. We've got to watch it. Like, no, we're going next to No, I need to watch Wrath of Khan. A battle with Khan cost the life of his friend, Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock. Kirk took Spock's death very hard, but found a way to cheat death again by returning Spock's Fault living power. spirit to his regenerated body. This came at a terrible I'm liking price. this mosaic compilation that's going Kirk's on. Kirk's son, David Marcus, was killed by Klingons. And the Enterprise itself was Klingons. destroyed. And to save his friend, Kirk had violated the direct death of my boy. orders from Starfleet Command, effectively ending his career. His return to Earth to face Starfleet charges for having violated orders. Yeah, they'd be fine. Although the charges were serious, the Federation Council chose not to punish Kirk, but instead recognized his heroism by granting him command. Are they of just the skipping the voyage Starship home? They just skipped Enterprise. the voyage home. <laughs> As captain wow. of the second Enterprise, Kirk played a pivotal like role voyage ho voyage in the historic shame here. Kittimer Peace Conference, and he retired shortly thereafter. In 2293. Will this address generations? Two years it later, does, yes. the galaxy mourned the loss of Captain Kirk, who was Kirk. believed killed during the maiden voyage of the Enterprise B. Wait. But the galaxy was wrong. No, yeah, Mark Lennon Kirk didn't had, die for in a while. fact, disappeared into a time space anomaly. No, yeah, voyage was good. Nexus. He remained in the Nexus until 2371. 
when he emerged to help fellow Enterprise Captain Jean-Luc Picard save the Viridian system from destruction at the hands of Dr. Tolian Soren. Tolian Soren was Sor stopped, but when it was over... What a waste of Malcolm McDowell. James T. Kirk... He had a couple of good lines in that film, and that was about it. Life. Time is like Kirk the fire. is remembered as a pioneering force in 23rd century space exploration and for his role in helping to build a bridge of peace between the United Federation of Planets and the Klingon Empire. Yeah, but he didn't want to. It just kind of happened. That's cool. How many little topics have we got? Only a few. Let's have a look at uh, Jean-Luc Pic Picard. Captain Jean-Luc Picard was the commander of the 5th Starship Enterprise and a noted figure in space exploration science and interstellar diplomacy. Picard was born on <laughs> Earth <laughs> in 2305 so to a tradition-bound French vintner who lived in the small town of La Barre. As a boy, young Jean-Luc built model starships and mm. dreamed of exploring the stars. Also, his mother hung his himself. Father I'm not going to mention that because it doesn't happen ambitions. for a while. But for the boy... The call of the unknown could not be quieted. So in 2322, Picard Ooh. applied Ooh. to Starfleet Academy. Did we know that? Much to his disappointment, he failed at his first attempt. The boy! His application <laughs> was accepted the following year. Young Picard studied archaeology under Professor Picard. Richard Gill he says Picard. and he was at the French top of his there. academic class. He even won the Academy Marathon. Oh, look at, at this Zanola generic running two. footage. Shortly after his graduation in 2327, while awaiting his first posting, the brash young Picard picked a fight with three Nausikans at Starbase Air. Dom Jot! During the ensuing Human brawl, play, Dom Picard Jot. was stabbed through the heart and required through cardiac the heart. replacement surgery to, to install an artificial you heart. Give Tom John a bad name. Years later, Lieutenant Picard was a bridge officer on the USS Stargazer during the crisis when the ship's captain was killed. No. Picard took charge of the bridge and for his valor was promoted to captain and given command of the Stargazer in 2333 You've got to bet at some point then someone's prepping a prequel series with that. Picard commanded the Stargazer until 2355, when the ship was nearly destroyed by an unprovoked sneak attack near the Maxia Zeta star system. By the Ferengi! The surviving Stargazer crew, Kill including Mark. Picard, drifted for weeks in a shuttlecraft Do like in young Indiana before Jones. being rescued. Young I don't know. Sorry, Ran Aaron, you've lost me. I've never seen Young Indy. In late Indiana 2363, Picard oh, that's from uh, Starship Mine. That's the Barry on Starship, Suite, isn't it? The USS Enterprise D. During over seven years as her captain, Picard voyaged yeah, the stars so aboard good. the Federation's flagship, acting as scientist, diplomat, and adventurer. Picard's speed training could not have prepared him for his encounter with a Borg in 2366. Picard was abducted by the Borg, surgically mutilated, transformed into an he entity called chance. Locutus of Borg. Picard was rescued by an Tapestry Enterprise D away episode. team, but retained the emotional yes, the scars I that from order. that horrible ordeal for some time. Oh no, you made On Mark the Leonard sad. Side, <laughs> you must die. something of a renaissance man, whose areas of interest ranged from horseback riding to archaeology to fictional detective Dixon Hill <laughs> to fencing, drama, astrophysics, That's not Picard. literature, it looks like and Picard, music. But it isn't. In 2368... The Enterprise D came upon a probe that rendered Picard unconscious, during which his mind received oh, a lifetime of memories of a man named Cayman from the now dead planet Catan. <laughs> Cayman had played a Resican flute, and after Picard regained consciousness, right 
He treasured that instrument because of having shared Cayman's memories. Picard's command of the Enterprise D came to an end in 2371. <laughs> Shot of and the starship was destroyed while protecting the Viridian star system against destruction by the evil scientist Soren. Oh, shit. The starship Enterprise D has earned its place in history, along with its distinguished predecessors. But Jean-Luc Picard and his crew look forward so, to new adventures on the final frontier. So yeah, pre pre ninety six. So we're definitely before. Uh... Just hoping this isn't the usual way our missions will go, sir. Oh no, number one. No, oh, no, number one. I'm sure most will be much more interesting. Let's see what's out there. Oh, that was a cool transition. Engage. I like that. I like enthusiastic. Guy. Engage. It's not engage. It's engage. All right. Uh, let's do a Star Trek production history. This could be actually generally interesting. Star Trek's vision of the future was the creation of writer-producer Gene Roddenberry. Gerald Roddenberry. Although Roddenberry was primarily noted as a writer of television westerns, in the early 60s, he began developing a number of other properties including one that he described as Wagon Train to the Stars. In 1964, the camera started rolling on a pilot episode for Star Trek. This episode, entitled The Cage, starred Jeffrey Hunter... Still the best shot in all of Star Trek, that, when it goes through the dome. ...in command Iconic. of the starship Enterprise. To Roddenberry's disappointment, NBC rejected the Star Trek pilot, calling it too cerebral. Hmm, what's the that only even mean? The consolation was the fact that NBC was willing to thinky? give Star Trek a second chance by ordering a second pilot episode. Like that's unheard of. That is still this unheard of. This second pilot, yeah, no pew pew tonight, Renarian. Where Sorry. no man has gone before, starred William Shatner in the role of Captain James T. Kirk. And Leonard Nimoy as Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock. This Not to be time, confused with the Dr. Network Spock. This gave Roddenberry the green light, and Star Trek premiered on September 8th, Oh, right. I'm so okay. I see what you're saying here. Not enough action. The Starship Enterprise soared into millions of homes, each week transforming its viewers from Earth-bound humans to interstellar adventurers, exploring strange new worlds. On the Seeking final new frontier, life. where no man had gone before. Unfortunately, Star Trek was far from a hit during its three years on NBC, and it was frequently near the bottom of the ratings heap. Nevertheless, the show developed a loyal viewership, and Star Trek fans rallied to Roddenberry's support. When NBC threatened with a little help from Roddenberry himself, like there were season. there were talks of he did his own writing Even campaign. The Star Trek <laughs> fans could not save the show a second time, and Star Trek was cancelled after its third year. Ironically, just before science fiction became reality, when Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon. Everyone expected Star Trek to fade into obscurity. Oh, no, no. But thanks to syndicated reruns, Star Trek actually grew in popularity. Star Trek Mr. was a Spock for president. <laughs> and the first Star Trek conventions were a sign of this life after death. Paramount Pictures responded to the fans' demands by announcing plans for a new weekly series oh, phase two, called yeah. Star Trek II. All of the original series actors <laughs> agreed boogaloo. to return for this revival, except Leonard Nimoy, whose character was to be replaced by a full Vulcan officer named Zahn. Oh, Zahn yeah. Star Trek II never I made Stone it into production. was the production. one that ended up in the motion picture, wasn't it? No, Just no, it's not Stone. Just two weeks before the scheduled start of principal photography, Paramount cancelled the series and announced plans to expand the first episode is, into a major motion in picture <laughs> to be directed by Robert Wise, 
was the and TNG stage. By Roddenberry. The reason was sure Star remember. Wars. George Lucas had proven what Roddenberry was saying all along. That there was a market for well-produced science fiction entertainment. Still is. Star Trek, a motion picture, was yes. released in late 1979. The best of the Star Trek films. The return of the Starship no else is here. You can't was stop a me. resounding financial success, although fan and critical reaction was mixed. What do they know? Thrust us ahead, Mr. Listen to that soundtrack. Take us out. Look at that capital ship. Look at it growing into space. Yeah. The success of the first Star Trek movie led to a series of new adventures with our heroes. In 1982, <laughs> Ricardo Montalban returned as the that. evil Khan in <laughs> Star Trek symbol. II. The Wrath of Khan. That film featured the controversial death of Mr. Spock. But even death is not always what it seems to be in the world. <laughs> death of Star can't Trek. make up for a boatload of money. Spock returned to life in Star Trek III, but the Enterprise was destroyed in the process. Star Trek The Next Generation premiered in 1987. <laughs> yes, same, Featuring actually. an all-new cast son. aboard an entirely new Starship Enterprise. With Patrick Stewart as Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Picard, Star Trek continued its mission to the far reaches of the galaxy. Gene Roddenberry created the new series and guided its early days, but he soon handed the reins over to his hand-picked successor, Berman. Roddenberry died in 1991, but he lived long enough to see his new Star Trek become the most successful dramatic series in syndicated television. Yep. So popular was Star Trek The Next Generation that in 1993, a Star Trek Deep Space Nine, created by Rick Berman and Michael Piller, hit the airwaves. Featuring Avery Brooks as Commander Ben Damn, Sisko. Spencer. Star Trek The Next Generation ended its hugely successful run in 1994 after seven years of growing popularity. But that wasn't the end of the road for Captain Picard and company. Oh no, 23 years later. As soon no. as production ended on the last Next Generation episode, <laughs> shooting was already beginning on the first Next Generation movie, entitled Star Trek Generations. That film saw the Next Generation's graduation to the big screen. And the tragic I wonder end if they're going to talk about Generations 2. For Captain James T. Kirk. And in 1995, Ooh. Star Trek took yet another giant leap forward with the premiere of Star Trek Voyager on the new yeah, okay. United Paramount Network. This latest Star UPN. Trek was created by the creative team of Rick Berman, Michael Piller, and Jerry Taylor. The spin-off starred Kate Mulgrew as Captain Catherine, Catherine Janeway, Janeway, commanding the starship Voyager. Lost somewhere in the distant Delta Quadrant <laughs> Just watch of the her. galaxy. Oh, she's gone now. <laughs> it's been 30 years since Gene Roddenberry first Has it been a long time, his Mark? television star. Say it's been a long time. I've been a long now, road. on the eve of the 21st century, his enterprise hey, is still going boldly where no one has gone before. I would like, you know, I would, I would advocate for Mark Leonard to be... Uh, to have some sort of AI voice r replication so they can carry on saying and in 2001 we had Enterprise and then there was a long gap where there was nothing much happened on apart from a couple of films and then we had voice, uh, into, but, Accessing Oh, no didn't want to do that I wanted to go Topics Accessing Thank you uh, History of the Enterprise In the history of space exploration no ships are as well known as those named Enterprise I should put this on the pre-roll actually The first spaceship Enterprise we, did, we need a documentary channel orbital shuttle test vehicle 
the prototype for Earth's first reusable space transportation system. I.e. the glory days. The first Starship Enterprise, Starfleet Registry number NC. Are oh, you just going to skip over the XCD and the NX-01? Fine, Mark. The Constitution-class vessel launched from Starfleet San Francisco yards in 2245. <laughs> the hindsight Under of the command of Captain Robert April. Captain Christopher oh, Pike April, later took the helm for over 10 years, including a fateful trip to planet Talos IV. In 2264, <laughs> yeah. the Enterprise embarked upon a five-year mission of exploration under the command of Captain James, James T. T. Kirk, Kirk, a voyage that would make both the Enterprise and Kirk a lot of into money. 23rd oh. century legends. Following the five-year mission, the Enterprise Best returned Enterprise to model. space dock in 2269, where it underwent a major refit of all systems. The ship remained in active service until 2284, when it was assigned to training duty at Starfleet Academy. The Enterprise was destroyed in 2285 by then Admiral Kirk in order to prevent the ship from falling into Klingon hands. Get out of there! Get out of there now! The second <laughs> starship. Oh no, we've already been through the motion NCC picture stuff. NCC-1701A was commissioned in 2286 and was assigned to Captain Kirk by order of the Federation Council in appreciation for Kirk's role oh, so they do in saving the Voyager Earth probe. from an alien space probe. Kate was the in second captain. The Enterprise a played well, a key role mm, in the historic yeah, you're right. Kittimer there was the Genevieve Bajol thing, but she wasn't like she left you in filming, so it doesn't really count. Peace with the Klingon Empire. The long association of James Kirk with the Enterprise came to an abrupt end in 2294, when Kirk was believed killed. <laughs> I love these movies. The I love these like voyage um, of the Enterprise. They call collages. That Enterprise, an Excelsior-class vessel, was on a shakedown cruise when it responded to a distress call. Kirk was rendering aid to an El Orion ship. Because they didn't have enough engineers. He was oh, a bunch dead. of them were installed on Tuesday. The fourth Enterprise, an Ambassador-class starship, played another key role in the ending of hostilities with the Klingon Empire. It's like the 11th Doctor and Doctor the Enterprise not really the 11th, C but. commanded by Captain Rachel Garrett rendered aid to a Klingon outpost under attack by Romulan forces in 2344. Although the ship was nearly destroyed in the battle, the bravery of the Enterprise nearly crew destroyed. helped win the respect of the Klingons. I thought it was destroyed. The most recent Starship Enterprise was a Galaxy Class Explorer. Launched from the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards wow, we've had like in 2363. Under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Picard, the Enterprise D served as the Federation flagship in a wide range of critical, scientific, diplomatic, and Yeah, I'm sure the sea was destroyed. The ship was destroyed in 2371 at Planet Viridian 3. But there is little doubt that yet another starship will soon become the sixth ship to bear the name. The best looking and ship. And that it too will carry the out -tier Starfleet Star Trek Starship to Enterprise. explore strange new worlds. Well, it won't do a lot of that. Where no one has gone before. It'll go to Baku. We'll count to the Borg. We'll go to Romulus. Beat it. Get out of here. Let's do the history of the future. Last documentary. What mysteries does the night sky hold? Is there anyone else out there? Are you okay, Leonard? Humanity began to reach for the answers to those questions with the launch of Sputnik 1 oh, in wow. 1957. Uh, which Earth's enterprise have you got, Jim? Space age had begun. And with it, humankind shared a new commitment to explore the final frontier. Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Not just the moon, but all the planets of the solar system 
were now in reach of human enterprise. Even Uranus. But even as humans strove for ever greater achievements in the quest for knowledge, some what is this footage? to tear their world apart. That... The eugenics wars brought Earth noble? to the verge of a new dark age when a group of genetically engineered supermen <laughs> tried to conquer the planet. These the tyrants the led by Khan <laughs> Noonien Singh were finally defeated in 1996. Uh, but Khan maybe. himself escaped into space. Peace 96, was 2022. Mm, but Earth pick. still had many troubled years ahead. The nations of Earth still did not understand the necessity of allowing all Have they just footage from Eastern European countries here, or to contribute to society am I reading into this too much? Until the Bell Riots of 2024. And the uh -oh. specter of nuclear warfare avoided not long now. a century <laughs> after Hiroshima nearly destroyed humanity during World War III. Get bunkers ready. In the mid-21st century. <laughs> Bootiful in the eugenics wars. Okay. <laughs> That's going into that canon now. <laughs> but humankind did find the wisdom and the strength not to destroy itself. Even in those are you, dark are hours, you a eugenics soldier, Booter? Are you the baddie? Was taking the oh my gosh, yeah, pre Cochrane, Zephyrin Cochrane. Uh, pre Cromwell, Zephyrin Cochrane. Warp drive in 2061. With faster than light travel now a reality. The exploration of space a took a giant on that. <laughs> leap forward. And Maybe humans go. found that they were not alone in the universe. The Romulan War tested humanity's yeah. mettle. When it was over, Earth banded together with its friends to form the United friends. Federation of Planets. One of the Federation's most visible symbols was its star fleet. An interstellar scientific, diplomatic, and defensive agency charged with the exploration of the galaxy to boldly go where no one has gone Violate before. the Prime Directive. During Starfleet's early days, we learned not Bad to luck. interfere in that. the affairs of other societies, no matter how strange the they may from. appear to us. And we learned how important it is to be cautious when making first contact with a new life form. A disastrous first contact mission in 2218 led to nearly a century of hostility. Uh, I think they changed. Between the Federation yeah, when's Broken and the Bow? Klingon Someone memory Alpha Broken Bow. That wasn't 2218. Starfleet's was most it? famous vessel was the Starship no, was 2150 something. Under the command of James T. Kirk, the Enterprise set <laughs> off in 2264. <laughs> on a five-year mission of discovery. I don't even think we're the intelligent life, Jim. The of space exploration. <laughs> we're dumb as fuck. Kirk's adventures weren't all peaceful, however. The Enterprise was instrumental in repelling a Romulan incursion in 2266. And a year later, the Enterprise was the only ship standing between the Federation and a Klingon and, invasion And a Vase's force. seduction of Spock. The beginnings of oh, be peace back a with the Klingons finally came in 2293 with the historic Kittimer Accords. The fifth Starship Enterprise was launched in 2363 under the command of Jean-Luc Picard. Under Picard's leadership, this new Enterprise continued Starfleet's mission of science and diplomacy while scoring an impressive list of accomplishments. Preventing an extra-galactic takeover of Starfleet Command. First known contact with the Borg. Prevention of a Klingon civil war. And keeping peace with the Cardassians. In 2369, Bajoran terrorists finally freed their homeworld bringing to an end decades of oppressive Cardassian rule. In their retreat, the Cardassians abandoned a space station formerly known as Terak Nor, now redesignated Deep Space Nine. Of course, the Bajorans weren't the only ones who opposed the Cardassians. A few Federation outlaws banded together to defend their homes. <laughs> they called themselves 
the Maquis. Oh, the Maquis, we're onto the Maquis. In 2371, a Maquis vessel fleeing from the Cardassians was lost the in an area known the as the bitch. Badlands. Several weeks later, the new intrepid class Federation starship Voyager, investigating the incident, also disappeared. <laughs> R.A.P. that one first officer. Neither ship has been heard from since. Ah. While it may seem paradoxical, logic dictates that our expanding knowledge of the universe serves to uncover ever greater mysteries. Cabot, yeah. Clearly, the Cabot human Janitor. adventure <laughs> is just beginning. Da, 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 da. Okay, there is one more thing I want to try Accessing. and find on here. Aha! Video entries. There are a ton of video entries on here. When they play. I used to watch these over and over again. I am not a merry man. Sorry. Like, I used to see these before I'd seen these, because, like, they aired in America before they came over here, and I didn't get them until they came on tape, which was recorded off the telly. So I would actually send this clip before I watched the episode, and I was so fucking confused. Uh, where are we? So, and what's the video clip for Android? Containing a video clip. Where's the video clip? Oh, video clip. I had to press the button. Now tell me, Commander, what is data? I don't understand. What is he? A machine. Is he? Are you sure? Yes. You see, he's met two of your three criteria for sentience, so what if he meets the third? Consciousness in even the smallest degree. What is he then? I don't know. Do you? Do you? Do you? See, this is the thing, like, auto, when we get onto, when we get onto Trek Trek in these, like, when we did the watch along, we're just gonna be silent because we're just watching the like the argument is just gonna be so good. Amoeba. I, I won't go through every single one of these. I just want to pick out a few of them. Can't wait for this episode. Ba, 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 ba. So I remember. I remember this was was. This is awesome. This is from Q. Uh, Eyeball. No, this is from Q. -Hoo. Yeah, this scene is so good. Look at this. Literally tearing out the hull. The type of laser beam is slicing into the saucer section. You're carving us up like a roast. <laughs> carving us up like a roast. We are the Borg. Yeah, really good, really good. Now this is the one that hooked me. If I think, yeah, this bit, this bit, this is great. This is so good. The swell of the instruments. The dramatic nature of the of the entity causing the damage. And then you get this explosion. What do you see rising from the explosion? So good, so fucking good. The offspring, I wonder what this is. This is gonna be, yeah. I feel. What do you feel, Mom? I love you, Father. I wish I could feel it with you. Oh! oh. I will feel it. For both of us. Took those hot strings out. Thank you for my life. It's a life, Data. Okay. Dal Rock. <laughs> this is such a dumb episode. Once upon a time, th th there was a Dal Rock. And it lives there in the woods. And he hated the village and all of the villagers. And he wanted to see them destroyed. Yes, the Dalrock is here. 
I, that, that's just one of the dumbest episodes. I can't. We're not far from that. What? Not a DS9 watch along. It's like that's so. It's gonna be terrible. What is Grup? Oh no! I know what this is. I'm a Grup. A grown up. <laughs> and I want to help you. <laughs> what a weird clip to pull. Ah, oh, Kay Kayla. There's video clips of our girl Susie Plaxon. What a waste killing her. I am Locutus, a Borg. Resistance is futile. Your life as it has been is over. From this time forward, you will service us. Is there any world in which we don't give Best of Both Worlds a 10 out of 10? Like, I don't, I feel like there is, what's in Ponfar? This could be Spock, isn't it? Oh yeah. He's dead. What a weird clip to pick. <laughs> He's dead. Uh, what? Ribovirochic nucleic structure? You don't what you don't love the best of both worlds. What's a forty percent drop in mass. I may you have are. lost one of them. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Another moment and Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. I'm just a London urchin. What the fuck's happened to me? Tea ceremony. This is going to be the one that Worf does with Pulaski, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. Up the long ladder. You must not drink the tea. It is deadly to humans. And none too good for Klingons. It is a test of bravery, of one's ability to look at the face of mortality. It is also a reminder that death is an experience best shared. Like the tea. Like the tea. Uh, this is probably the clip I watch the most of. If I think this is the one I think it is. I think this is the one from DS9, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I must have watched this like hundreds of times. They've locked on. We will auxiliary power. That's the fast man. So good. Okay, let's quit the Omnipedia. Let's go and look at something else. Please confirm memory alpha deactivation request. Yes, I would like to leave memory alpha now. Deactivation complete. <laughs> Omnipedia database now disconnected from this terminal. Okay, let's look at uh, something similar to the captain uh, to the uh, technical manual. Let's look at the captain's chair. I just need to put the CD in. Da -da 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 -da. Where the hell is it? No, not there. Hang on one second. Got to put the proper, got to put the proper CD in. Games track. Um, no, where is it? Oh, sorry. Captain's chair. There we go. CD, CD. Have to manually mount the CD before it'll work. Da da da. Pass from the past. Look at this. Uh, Captain's chair. No, I didn't actually own this. I, I, I. Go. Oh, my audio's gone again. Hang on. The there captain's chair, a special presentation of the Starfleet Virtual Fleet Museum. Here you can explore the bridges of five go. of Starfleet's most distinguished vessels and learn about their history, operations, and those who served aboard them. So this was a little bit more advanced. I think this is probably the last big Simon and Schuster thing, but they go up to the Enterprise E. But we'll we'll skip the D in this case because we've done the technical manual. But welcome to USS Enterprise NCC one seven zero one which achieved its legendary fame under the command of Captain James Tiberius Kirk. Ooh, we can go to exterior. So yeah, this is, this is the bridge. What's exterior do? So we can do exterior. Accessing Starfleet okay, yeah, so they use the same database. same tech they do for the uh, for the uh, for the other one. So you can have a little vote, vote around the ship. Ooh. So yeah, again, back in the 90s, this was outrageous technology. So we can pan. Oops, show map. Ah, we can go different places, so we can go here. Obviously not as good as the Roddenberry archive, but... 
And this would have been CG, actually, looking at it. This would have been a CG recreation. What else have we got in the menus? Okay, Moises, Guided Tours, yeah, okay. Ooh, next would be Next Ship. Uh, I mean, you'd have paid like about 40, 50 quid for this. I want to say I want to say I think this is CG, but yeah, it must it must be it must be. Oh gosh, we can even go like yeah. But there's nothing else to see apart from the bridge. You just go to the bridge. Uh, okay, let's go to the the Defiant. Now this is the USS Defiant NX Seven Tactical. Oops. Mm, never mind. View screen. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen the Defiant like. I've, I've, ne I've, I've never really sort of... I, I, I never had this one, so this is new to me. Kayla's cool. Kayla's cool. Kayla. Yeah, Kayla. <laughs> oh. Got a little... Ooh! Road kick blood ply. Thank you. On the Defiance Bridge, though? Could you imagine the mess it would make here? Interestingly how, interesting how the, the captain's chair has its own little riser. Safety hazard there. But it was a tough little ship. Can we activate the cloaking device? Oh, we just get a cool, funky Lacars display. Like this is what a what a waste of space. Oh Christ! Sorry, my audio is doing that thing again. There we go. Right. Sorry. Uh, what a waste of space that is. <laughs> was this the cloaking device? No, that was just the science panel. Ooh. Accessing master situation monitor diagram. Ah, oh, you can see the the MSD. Look at this. So we can find the hidden things. So it's like a little. Shuttle pod there. Is there a shuttle pod in the Defiant? I never really, really realised that. Landing gear. Wait, you could land the Defiant? Oh yeah, two landing gears. Wow, can you imagine? Driver called assembly. What else we got? Oh, you can actually look at all the different panels and they animate. Oh my gosh. This is a Lacar's lover's dream. Oh, look at that. Go over all the displays. Every display opens. Holy shit. That's incredible. Oh, we've got to go back to the consoles here. Oh, there's some pads here. What have we got? I just got the pad that says go away. Let's have a look. Uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the con. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is cool. This is very cool. Fly control. We're always... I found weird about the Defiant was how this really should have been the tactical display, but then I suppose it doesn't really matter. But then I think this engineering. Ta reverse engineering. Yeah, you can see all oh, the L cars are just oh, oh, that's lovely. Was this one? No, tactical. Tactical. Oh no, this is tactical. So this is tactical. Which obviously, who knows what these mean? Who knows? This is cool. I didn't realise you could go to every display. What do they mean? Well, you have to be trained in Starfleet to know. Oh, stellar cartography. Can we sit in the captain's chair? Let's sit in the captain's chair. Mr. O'Brien. Fire! I need to twist my neck to an uncomfortable angle. So yeah, these are only the bridges, I think. Let's find out. Can we go through the door? Ooh, here's the plaque. The USS Sao Paulo. Uh, I mean the Defiant. Can we go elsewhere? Oh. Ooh! Ooh! Hello! Wow! No, this is an actual set org. Starboard Egress. Oh, okay. That was cool. Oh, and are we there now? Oh, we are! Oh, wow! Uh, okay. Oh, no. What's through there then? Oh, ah. Okay, where are we? Turbo lift? Oh, turbo lift. Okay, we can't. I don't think we can go anywhere. I don't realise we're exploring the whole Defiant here. Oh, okay, right, so this is just playing a little cutscene. Okay, and then through, and then. What's in there? Ooh! What's in this? This is a... Alright, oh, that's nothing. What's in this one, then? Uh, basically the same. 
Okay. Back to the bridge. Can take me for a little walk. <laughs> Love it's just a guy with a handheld camera. Or a girl with a handheld camera. Someone with a handheld, handheld camera. Back on the bridge. Okay, that was a little walkthrough I wasn't expecting. Alright, let's go to Voyager. Now, this should USS actually Voyager NCC be... Yeah. ...represented the pinnacle of Starfleet's engineering prowess when Oops. it was science. When it was science? Google Voice messes up the words. Well, yes. Google Voice will do that. Ooh, plasma cons constriction? Constriction? Never heard of constriction. Mission Ops. Mission Ops? Operations. Ah, this is, this is what Harry Kim saw every day. Staring at these screens. Now, can we go into... Ops. Where are the bathrooms? There, there are no bathrooms. Science. They beam the matter out of you. Can we not go to Janeway's ready room? Oh, here we go. Mm. Alright, conference range. I thought that was the ready room. I think the ready room's the other one, isn't it? Okay, but we can still look around the conference room. That's cool. we got here. Ooh! <laughs> I love that snot motion. Close it. Let's just watch that again. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Do we get a map here? Yeah, we got a little map. Cool. Oops, no, no, don't press that button. Don't press that button. I don't want to go there just yet. There we go. Okay, this is a lot more detailed than I thought it would be. We can't go that way. What's that? Some random display. Alright, let's see if we can get to Janeway's, uh... <laughs> Love it. Uh, so Janeway's ready room's over here? Is this it? Yes, here we go. My ready room. With the weird little kind of curvy sofa thing. What are you doing with that dog? Was it talking to you? Q in the grey. Um, can I move? Let's get the map. Oh, okay, so we can only sit. Janeway's chair. Addy is ensign before you strain yourself. So what's this door? No, we can't go there. Okay. Uh, back under the bridge. Let's just see if we can go down the turbo lift. Out we go. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So it's... That's the ready room. That's another... Oh, we don't really see anyone sitting at this terminal, because usually Taurus sits over there. Paris doing anything. We never see anyone at this one. Where is it supposed to be? Just... Warp systems monitor, yeah. Let's go up here, let's try it. Yep, yeah, thank you. Ooh, what's through here? Ooh, where are we going? Are we just gonna sit inside the turbo lift? We're just gonna go we're just gonna go inside the turbo lift, okay. You're not gonna take me anywhere? Can't go to engineering? Maybe? No. Okay, we'll go to the Enterprise E then. Presented here is the current state of the oh, art okay. in Starship design. The USS Enterprise NCC 1701E, under the command of Captain Jean Luc Picard. Not my favourite bridge design. I mean, when Roddenberry Archive reopens, we'll go through all this. Oh, yeah, the random pillar. I forgot about that. The Michael Pillar. <laughs> yeah, this one isn't quite as highly detailed. They obviously were rushed to take shots. Oh. So, come on, let's go through some doors. Can we go through some doors? No, we can't go through some doors. Obviously, not as much, uh... There are a lot of... Uh, I think it's Picard's ready room down there, maybe? Science. Science. Uh, let's have a look at the map. Hang on. Yeah, definitely not as many places you can go. Oh, go away. That button. No ready room? Ah, boo! The Enterprise E bridge, which was yeah, nice enough. Not my favourite over here. No, oh, we get look at the replicator. <laughs> uh, what about any of the rear door? 
was. I think we tried them, didn't we? Yeah, no. Not as detailed. It's an okay bridge. Oh, we can do the exterior shot, though. Accessing oh, Starfleet yeah. Vessel Exterior Database. I want to underside the shadow. Oh, let's do that. Wow. Okay. That's Starship Captain's Chair. That's pretty much all this was. Like, they released this for like 40, 50 odd quid, and that was pretty much it, but. Yeah. Index guided tours. God damn, my audio keeps doing this. Hang on. Uh, we're not quite done yet. There's one more thing I want to look at before we. Deactivating uh, Captain's Chair. We'll call it a night. There was one I played a lot of. Um, it's a game called Starship Creator. And it was kind of a game. Kind of a game and kind of a, a simulator. Oh, I need to load the disc, don't I? Wear it with me. Oops. No, I do not. Uh, CD-ROM, load image. Where did I put the Starship Creator ISO file? Do -lo 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 -lo. Starship Technical Manual. No, not that one. I think. I think he, think he, think he. Actually, I know where it is. It's on my Google Drive. Ha ha ha. Da, 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 da. Game Star Trek. Starship Creator. There we go. Okay. Starship Creator. This was a strange game. This was very strange. But same people, Simon and Schuster. Oh my god, audio. Why do you keep doing this? Keep restarting the audio engine in, in freaking voice media. So yeah, so this was a strange game. You get to make your own starship, send it on missions, upgrade it to make other parts of starship. Um, so let's create a new admiral. Let's... What is a CD-ROM? Uh, of course I'm Captain Idle. Nice soundtrack, awesome. actually. So you can see here we have a resource budget. 400... For, sorry, 42,500. What's an Excelsior class? It's 28. Or with parts. Defiant class, 33. Uh, we got here, Galaxy class is 32. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna Intrepid, 38. The idea is you have lots of missions. Sorry, that music is loud. Let me turn that down a bit. There we go. Uh, we got this, how much is that? That's 42. Oh, I can just about afford that. I think I'm gonna have to upgrade it, so we'll need to go. We won't be quite as ambitious. Let's go for a Galaxy class. 32,000. Credits. Uh, oh, fleet. So, what's in my fleet? Nothing in my fleet. We can go to side view or top view. So, let's grab. Let's go Galaxy class. We'll select that. There we go. We'll proceed. Commencing uh, assembly for new Galaxy class Starfleet vessel. And here we go. So, here's the fun part. You can actually you can actually customize it with different things. There wasn't a lot of choice. I think there's only like three choices, three or four. Yeah. So let's make let's make this look funky. So let's have those, and then I think yeah, you grab it and drag it. <laughs> Different hulls. Oh yeah, let's get the let's get the turkey. Uh, now I don't know if no, maybe not actually. Let's go for yeah, slim backs. What kind of saucer do we want? Oh yeah, let's have let's have this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's horrible. That's really ugly. Processing. Do we get to name it? Yeah, and we get a little wireframe we can drag about. <laughs> this is this is our blueprint. Uh, create ship. Assembling structure. Oh, there we go, and then we can look at it. Oh, the emulator's struggling here a little bit. Look at that low res graphics. But you know, for the time, you could flip it about. You could look at it and you go, "Wow, look at the ship. That's so cool." Okay, let's proceed. Processing. Do I get to name it? Oh, I get to name it. We'll call it the USS... What do you reckon, chat? What are we call this ship? Kind of looks a little bit Millennium Falcony, doesn't it? That'd be heresy, though. We cannot commit heresy on the stream. Uh, the USS Bottle Opener. <laughs> the USS Bottle Opener. Confirm name and structure. Please use 12 or fewer. Oh! 12 or fewer letters? Um... All right, 12 or fewer letters. <laughs> Please use 12 or fewer alphabet. Okay, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> we'll call it the USS 12 or fewer. 
Oh, he even puts it on there, look. Oh, that's why. Uh, proceed. Processing. Okay, so we have our 12 off here. So now we can, we can see interior, we can see exterior. Obviously it uses the master thing. We can look, look, we can look deck by deck. We can drag. Hang on. Oh God, we keep zooming in. How do I zoom out? <laughs> oh no, restore view, there we go. So you can hull, here we go. Uh, so you get different engines. I'm trying to remember this. There we go, we can move engines, we can upgrade them. Source, okay, that's the MSD. There's definitely like a shop somewhere uh, where you can actually upgrade components, but let's proceed with this for now. Oh, and then we get to add our crew. We get to pick the crew. That's right. Okay, so we're looking for someone to be the captain. We get Geron Enoch, Neil Hawk, yeah, Hoy. Oh, Ensign Hoyer. Catherine Janeway, but they cost money. So this is why money's important at the start. I blew out all my budget just getting the Galaxy Class Starship. I've got 9,000. She's 5,000 of that, and I've got a full ship to staff, so this is going to be different. We could have Jarvin. We could have Jellico. Jellico. Who's this guy? Carlos Jimenez. Irina Calandra. Let's go for the cheap people. Kess is pretty cheap. <gasps> Kim. Okay, Kim's going to be the captain. Kim's the captain. Okay, Kim's the captain. Who else have we got? Chief Engineer, Jason Stevens. He's pretty cheap. He's pretty cheap. We've got Lian Su, Zandra. Oh, I remember her. Simon Tarsus, seven hundred and seventy-eight. Yeah, let's get let's get a let's get him. Oh, actually, we've got some people assigned already. Oh wow. Okay, Security Officer, Susanna Layton. Who else have we got? Elizabeth Lenz, Nara. <gasps> Neelix is security officer, 389? That's a bargain! Let's do that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Communications officer? Robin Leffler is on security. Okay. Who else have we got? Communications. Nog. He's pretty cheap. O'Brien. Odo. <laughs> he also does Morala. Oh, but how much is Picard? Oh, he's quite cheap. Why is he so much cheaper than Janeway? Okay, you could be my community. Oh, he's ineligible for the position. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Sunky Reese. That's uh, Riker. Riker is my communications officer. Communications officer. Oh, is this is no, this is Thomas Riker. Ooh. Okay, first officer. Oh, Erica Benteen. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave it. Erica Benteen. Let's keep her there. She's a very good choice. Science officer. Data. Why not? Dr. Beverly Howard Crusher is my medical officer. Um, okay, we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Uh, my counsellor, Sarita Carson. Chakote. Chakote is the counsellor. Oh, he's ineligible. Okay, fine. Chell. Crusher, Crusher. Genesora. Kenneth Dolby. Ah, oh, Nella Darren. Uh, data. I've already got data in a position. Dax. Oh, she's ineligible. In EMH. Oh yeah, let's have Captain Rachel Garrett as my counsellor. <laughs> okay. You can just see all the available candidates, so you can have a load. There's loads of people here. Oh, I say loads. There's a few. All right, crew compliment. Personal yeah, crew compl uh, Tactical Officer Neelix is great. So I can see how much. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm stacked in engineering. I'm not so good in silence. Okay. Uh, let's proceed. Processing. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've got some missions available. We can do visit to Neba Fee, shakedown cruise, ride to the frontiers, test a probe, and collect data. Let's do let's do a shakedown cruise. I feel that's important. Uh, proceed. So delete report, remove missions. You can import. You can make your own missions for this, which was incredible. I made a few missions and things like that. There was a whole scripting language it had. It was kind of great. Process. We won't get far in these missions because here we go. We're gonna go. Let's run the mission. Here we go. Shakedown cruise of the USS. I forgot what I called it now. Twelve or fewer. T minus zero. So the fun fact is you can run these in real time. <laughs> or you can uh, accelerate time. Or restart this mission in a small floating window. You can actually set it to minimize. It'll run in the background so you can be proper sim. 
and do it like that. So let's accelerate time because otherwise you literally will be sitting here all day. Here we go. First officer, ready. Chief medical officer, ready. Science, ready. Security and tactical, ready. Fusion power system. Oh, here we go. Systems are starting up. Well, I think there's a market for this kind of game, but done better. Here we go. We're off. Activating. Here we go. Impulse engine shut down. Warp engine start up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I played a lot of this when I was younger. And off we go. Woo! This is, just to remind you, this is on Accelerate. This isn't on real time. <laughs> it doesn't even give you a time, like, how long it's going to take either. Oh, we can focus in. Oh, officer's log. Let's have a look and see what's going on on the ship. Still better than voyages and timelines. Uh, run through a possible sun, which might need to the... Oh, I see. You actually get a second entry, a log entry. Engineering, here we go. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, just, that's the same one. Okay. So that's just the full log. There we go, we can get closer. What's status? Status! No damage. We're good. We're running mission. We're nearly at the location. I promise I won't linger on this for too long. We're nearly there! Let's focus in. I think there are tactical missions as well. Oh, I'm Admiral! I'm Admiral Captain Idle! <laughs> Holy shit, let's change my name. Oh, hang on. There we go. Impulse engines are down. No, we're not running at full warp. See, this is the thing. Once you get, once you upgrade your warp engines, then you can, uh, you get faster warp. You do missions faster. Oh, here we go. Singularity detected. Course lock in. Come on, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're getting there. Who's flying the ship? Can I see my crew complement? Uh oh. Damage? Damage to fusion reactor? Oh wow. How do we get damage on a shakedown cruise? Well, it is a Tuesday. Shields are down. Oh, here we go. He's, he's... We're taking a we're taking a, a a wide angle in. I think I can't remember what the log was. I can't remember what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go somewhere and just do something, weren't we? So nearly there. Transport failed. Good thing we used test objects. <laughs> Tractor beams are nominal. Shuttlecraft tests. Unable to launch a shuttle because we don't. I don't think we have any shuttles. Unable to launch a cargo shuttle. We don't have any. Unlaunched. No, we can't. Yeah. We can't do any shuttles because I haven't put any shuttles on it. Phase two. Oh, here we go. What are we doing here? No functional stellar cartography. Because I haven't put anything on the ship. No cultural anthropology. No functional planetary science. No functional exobiology. Like, the fun thing about this was you could actually go to... very You could do, like, a cultural analysis of a planet. And if you didn't have a high enough level of exobiology lab, like, you wouldn't get as much money in. I feel that's kind of what Voyager's needs in timelines. Okay, launch of spectral data probe. Probe launch failed, because I don't have a probe. <laughs> it's just going to fail everything. Ge geological data probe. Nope, can't do that. Gravimetric data probe. Mm, bet you are, so can't do that. Probe is a comm beacon. Mm, nope, can't do that. <laughs> message delivery probe. Launch a message. Yeah, not until till Tuesday. For scanning tests. Underway. Man, this is an ugly ship. Time passes. Like, why would you run this in real time? Time passes. Negative. Oh, we no, we got some damage. There's no way to see the... Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, oh. Systems. Oh, no, cancel. 
Oh, maybe this is what I was supposed to do. Commencing graviton scan. Negative. Gamma radiation. Negative. Oh, damage repaired. Good. Yeah, that's what we have when you get a good engineering team. Time passes. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Yeah, I suppose he would. Yeah, it doesn't take as many resources, so you can just, yeah, you can do something else. You could run it at work. This guy, Starship Creators. Long range scan, negative. Time passes. The crew just sit twiddling their thumbs. Electromagnetic frequencies, negative. Mm, life forms, do 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 do. You tiny little life forms. Ba -la -ba -ba. Phase three. Oh, we're going back. Showing down the off to warp. Course locked in. It's very dynamic. Oh, we're actually going a higher warp now. We're actually going a little bit faster. So that's about a, that's about a warp five, a warp four and a half. This could be a good uh, pre-roll as well. Just run a load of these missions. But yeah, I should get this as a pre-roll. I do like how the L-Cars matches my... Uh, uh, matches my stream layer as well. That's quite nice. <laughs> T plus 495. Just random bits of music and then silence. Captain's log, star date. Something. Is there a star date on here? No. Star date T plus 512. We have failed on all our tests with our shakedown crews. We vastly have underestimated the capabilities of this ship, despite it being one of Starfleet's finest. I will have to do nothing more than set the self destruct and run away. I actually generally think, like, in Star Trek timelines, they should do voyages like this, though. That would be much more interesting. Your ship takes a bit of damage to certain systems that affects your rewards. Like, that could be cool. It could be fun. Look at this fun content made 30 years ago. Christ. Somewhat depressing. We'll get there. Like, I, I, I get the simulation aspect of this. That's quite fun. I find it. I, I feel like this is definitely someone. Someone. Someone that Simon and Schuster was just like, "Well, this is. This is. We've got to do this. This could be fun. This could be. A, this could be a good happening." Ooh, oh, we destroyed something. Targets destroyed. Quantum torpedo is incomplete. Lowering shields. Test range exit. Oh, here we go. Prepare for final phase. Impulse engines up. Departure underway. Take us out, Mister Riker. Course locked in. Let's go. Oh, no dramatic music? No bop 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 How about... <laughs> no, maybe not that. How about... How have you gotten so many <laughs> though, and 40 tanks have gotten gold today? <laughs> Auto somewhere is just like, what? What? A poop question, sir? Maybe. What about... About this long, this thick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nothing better than random triggers. Proven alert, Captain. Wesley. Wesley. <laughs> Wesley. Magnificent, isn't she? <laughs> they say time is the fire in which we burn. Oh, damage to the fusion reactor. Uh oh. Uh, what's our new destination? Return to base. Oh Jesus! Let's go. Woo! Ah. Ba -da. Play that entire log. Set course for Kronos. 
arm the photon torpedoes, engage the phaser banks, and prepare to unload a salvo on the capital city. <laughs> I was promised flying cars. I don't see any flying cars. Why? 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 Uh oh. Damage to primary personnel transporters because we don't have any flying cars. Where are my flying cars? Why? I'm your friend and you tricked me. Ooh. It appears we have lost our sex appeal, Captain. <laughs> More dramatic finale to this stream. <laughs> oh, we shut down warp engines. We're nearly at the starbase. Docking complete. Seven gold, seven achieved. Animal resource budget and oh, bloody hell. Oh wow, just preparing stuff. Oh, we got ten grand for this. Focus on Paramount Plus. That way, the Trek episode you watch can can affect your ship's mission. Yeah, there you go. Now you're getting synergy. Acknowledged. Okay, so we finished the mission. Proceed. Processing. Okay, let's do this ship. Right, how do we upgrade it? How do I do stuff with it? No, top side. No. Right, let's proceed. Processing. Wait, this is going to launch a mission, isn't it? No, 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 back. Processing. There's a way of upgrading ships in this. Once our mission's completed. Let me go back. Processing. Maybe it's here. No, back. Processing. Uh, back. Processing. Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, let's go back. No. Processing. How far back is this going to take me? Ah, uh, here we go. Right. So we should. Ten thousand schematics to upgrade a ship. There is a way of selecting. This ship is not spaceworthy. This okay, ship then. Is now spaceworthy. It's now spaceworthy. Ah, weapons. So, array. How do I buy? Wait, what? Where's my budget going then? Okay, so that's how many weapons I've got. All right, hang on, hang on. Propulsion. Type two. Let's go. This ship is not spaceworthy. Okay, install. There's a way you can get like all structure. Uh you can set your field strength. That doesn't seem to cost anything. Let's put that up full. Uh support. I'm trying to watch you, Star Trek. Ooh, class M environment. Living quarters. Oh, here we go. So we can go comfortable. No, let's go Spartan. Crew population. 1,000. No, 10 crew. 10 crew on a Spartan population. Medical systems. Basic. I think it must depend on the ship you get. Turbo lift system. Yeah, so you can upgrade different things. See, this is what you need in timelines. Oh, my God. You have three Mark Core computer cores. No, there's definitely a, a system somewhere where you can have like lots of different types of upgrade of ship. But anyway, it looks fun. Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, there's uh, there's different aspects to it, but it's fun. Let, let's quit though, because yeah, I want to really quit. <laughs> I really mean it. Anyway, please everyone. Three last events for the year uh, that are coming up. We have the award show happening on Saturday. This Saturday, the... Have fun for certain definitions of fun, yeah. The awards show happening this Saturday. Please come and join us. We've got 28 categories. We've got guests. We've got all sorts of things happening. It's going to be a great fun evening. Don your suits. Come and join us for the celebration of Star Trek for the end of the year. And then on the following Wednesday after that, we've got the Trek Time Trek show. And then on the 17th of December, 
uh, we will have a small charity stream where I will be streaming some chilled out Star Trek content, um, some relaxing stuff, and we're going to be raising some charity for Mind. Anything you can give, please come along, just chip in some small donations, we'll see what we can do and uh, try and raise some money for Mind UK. So just a small little four hour stream, just something to do to help, and I'll get some Tiltify information out there as well. So if you want to donate and you can't make the streams, you can donate as well, but it's all for a good cause. Like We're going to do it just as sort of like a brief mini charity, sort of to break up the edges before Christmas to kind of do that kind of thing but uh thank you very much for joining me tonight hopefully we'll get elite force going again soon and uh, best wishes to stars and i hope he feels much better tonight but uh for now uh i'll be all for myself we'll see you soon live long and prosper and ta-ra it'll be one more case to tell her about won't it chief inspector